Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It is written, The Lord made man in his image. It is also claimed by some that the reverse is true. As a matter of fact, it was our own Mark Twain who insisted that the Lord created Italy from the designs of Michelangelo. But in truth, each of us is a creator. Each of us makes his own little world. All of us hold the lives of others in our hands, for better, for worse, for life, for death. Listen, she talks. What do you mean she talks? She talks. She speaks. She has a voice. How? She's a doll. She's human. She's a wax doll. You made her yourself. She talks. Then let her say something. I love you, Jack. I love you. Well. Oh, it's a trick. What kind of trick? It is no trick, Joe. It is no trick. Our mystery drama, The Men with the Magic Fingers, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Incredibly complex technology that sustains the world of today is scarcely a century old. For the most part, it was the creation of men who had little or no formal scientific training. They were mostly spare time tinkerers, experimenters, handy, clever jacks of all trades, a teacher who invents the telephone, a village mechanic who pioneers and perfects the motor car, Two bicycle repairmen who fly the first airplane. In the opening years of our century, there was a man named Jack Youngblood. He owned a tawdry little carnival and sideshow that traveled the length and breadth of America. We're about to meet Jack at a moment when he's not really at his best. You, piety. You killed her. You killed You're her. You're crazy. Look, she's dead. How can she be dead? You, you were jealous. Jealous? Jack, how could and I now be? now she's dead. I'll kill you. Jack. You'll pay for this? No. You killed her? No. no don't hit me again. Don't hit me. No. He's crazy. Nothing can help. No. going to commotion about here. What's going on around here? What happened to this woman? You. You there. What did you do to her? What did I do to her? I guess it should be clear. I killed her. A doctor. I killed her. Get a doctor. There ain't no need for a doctor. Piety. She's dead. He killed her. We heard her scream for mercy. Yes. You're dead. But soon I'll be dead, too. What's your name, mister? The Queen. The Queen of Romany looked into my eyes. And she saw death. Your name, mister? Jack Youngblood. He's Jack Youngblood. Poor piety. I killed him. And the name of the deceased? I said the name of the deceased. Mr. Youngblood? Piety. Piety Youngblood. She was his wife. Why did you kill your wife? Uh, can't you hear what I'm saying to you? I hear you, Sheriff. I hear you. Well, why did you kill your wife? What can I tell you? The truth? You wouldn't believe it. Pull yourself together, man. I could say to you. Sheriff, I killed her because she just murdered the princess. 
What princess? And I would answer the princess of Romany. And you would ask... The princess of Romany? When? And I would answer just now. And you would ask... Where? And I would say, right in here. And you would ask... Now, where's the body? And I would answer there, on the floor, next to poor Piety. And you would say... But there ain't nothing on the floor. Just a heap of clothes and some shawls and ribbons and then and some dime store jewelry. So what do you want me to tell you? You wouldn't believe a word. <sighs> Mr. Youngblood, I am asking you again. Why did you kill your wife? I killed her because... Because... Why did I kill Piety? She loved me in her own way. But was it love? No, she's... Why did I do it? Maybe I better clear it up in my own mind. I suddenly lost all control of myself. <laughs> the papers, they'll say, man kills wife in a fit of passion. I don't think it happened suddenly. You plan it. You don't know what you're planning, but you're doing it. You're getting yourself ready to kill. When did I start getting myself ready? When? Step up, oh, sir. Oh, sir, here she is. Zoraya, you ask for her, you beg for her, you clamor for her, and here she is, Zoraya. She has danced before all the crown heads of Europe. Zoraya, see her in the forbidden love dance of ancient Egypt. A college education for one time and cents. Sit this way and watch her shimmy. Move this way and watch her shake. Princess Zoraya, queen of the Nile, the one and only Zoraya. I knew I'd find you in here, Jack. What are you doing, for pity's sake? Don't. Well, if you're going to spend all your time in a blacksmith's wagon, why are we paying Joe Frazier? Why don't you go to bed? Jack. Look, Potty, I'm busy. You don't love me anymore. No, that isn't so. If you did love me, you'd spend more time with me. More time? Good Lord, woman. All we do is spend time together. We live in a circus wagon. We're either traveling or working or sleeping. When ain't we together? We don't sit together. Talk together. Not anymore. Hey, piety, I have got to finish this. Now, you just run along. Jack, what am I doing wrong? Shh. You know, if you must know, I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. You are chewing gum. That's what you're doing. Here, you're supposed to be an alluring, exciting, voluptuous Arabian slave dancer and assault in the harem, and you stand there chewing gum for Pete's sake. My mother and father disowned me when I married oh, you. Oh, let's not start that. Nobody asked you. What do you, you mean, that, nobody asked me? You asked me to run away with you. You asked me to learn this... This immoral dance. You made me do it. It isn't immoral. It isn't? It isn't immoral to be half-naked and shake your body at a pack of leery-eyed degenerates? Yeah, it's immoral. It's degenerate. You know why? Because you make it immoral and degenerate. You have not got the warmth in your heart and the vision in your soul and the fire in your brain to do it like it was meant to be done. A ritualistic expression of the ancient art of love. What do you do? You stand up there and you chew gum. Don't be mad at me, Jack. Honey, I'll do anything you say. Look, when you're up there, what's going what's going through your mind? Nothing, Jack, honey. Nothing. Something has to be going through your mind. Well, something is... I'm thinking I'll be glad when this is all over. That's what you think. Don't be mad at me, Jack. You asked, and I told you the truth. Piety, listen. Can't you start saying to yourself, this is an expression of love, this is an offering of love, a religious ritual? Oh, you're crazy. If you tried, it would all be different. There would be a different spirit in that crowd. You'd really be Princess Zoraya, the queen of the Nile. Oh, Jack, don't you want to come to bed now? I have to work. On what? Yeah, what are you doing? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when I'm finished. Why can't you tell me now? Will you get out of here and leave me alone? You never used to shout at me. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Piety, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Go, go, now run along. Run along? 
Am I a little girl? <sighs> I won't be late. Hey, Jack. You gonna spend the night in my wagon, though? If you are, you better find me another place to sleep. Oh, I had no idea it was so late, Joe. It must be two in the morning. Hey, what's that you're making? This? Hmm? Yeah. A new act. What kind of act? All I see there is that this is a doll. Kind of life size doll. Is that what you've been working on uh, all these nights? What do you think of her? Hmm? She ain't bad looking. Wait till you see her in costume. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, and meet. Meet. I need a good name. Um, Leonora. Who's Leonora? You ask that question, friend, and what does it prove? It proves that you are from the country, deep down in the boonies. Not only do you not know that the Civil War has been over these 50 years or more, you weren't even aware that we had one. Well, sir, Leonora is the Princess Leonora, queen of the Romany nation. And what is the Romany nation? Why, the gypsies. Ask Princess Leonora. She knows all. She tells all. A fortune teller? Uh, I'll sit her behind the table, okay? And we get a room in a crowd, and he asks a question. And then I say, Oh, Princess Leonora, reach into the depths of your mysterious wisdom and answer. And she answers. She answers. Sure. She talks. Sure. It can't work. Oh, I know you can throw your voice, Jack, but it's, it's too risky. Well, I'm not going to pull a stunt like that. She's going to talk. You know them newfangled phonograph records under the table, under a mystical, magical cloth, with all of them astral signs of the zodiac and whatnot? I got some small phonograph records. But, but of course, Jack, there's only a certain number of questions you can be asked. Are you kidding? There's a million questions. You think so? Okay, okay, you go ahead. You're the rule. Ask a question. Ask... Princess Leonora, the Romany Queen. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Princess, I am keeping company with this beautiful girl. Are we going to get married? Ah, my red-haired friend. I foresee a difficult pathway ahead. But in the end, you will know true happiness. Hey. Well, there's only four or five, six maybe questions. Love, money, sickness, health, stuff like that. I got a phonograph record for all of the answers. Hey, but red hair, how did she know I had red hair? Well, I also got specials like if a guy is short or tall or fat, if a woman is good looking. Hey, it, it's risky, Joe. It's risky. Wait, wait till you see her ready to go dressed in red and black. Black hair, red lips, red blouse, black skirt, black eyes, red cheeks. Oh, she'll take your breath away. Ask Princess Leonora, Queen of Romany, ask! Ask Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romany people. She sees in the dark, she sees into your heart, into your mind. Ask for 50 cents, learn your future. For 50 cents, for one half a dollar, know your fate. Ah, the gentleman in the back, Mr. Abercrombie, take his money and make him welcome. Speak, sir, ask, and it shall be revealed to you. Uh, my wife is very ill, and the doctors say there's no hope, but is there hope? Is there... We await your reply, princess. My dear, suffering friend, every day that dawns brings up hope and strength, and each day brings the promise of the miracle. Believe, my friend, believe, and I promise you, there is hope. Thank you, Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romany people. Thank you. And now, is there anyone else? Jack. Hmm? Jack, what are you doing? Well, you can see what I'm doing. I'm fixing her hair. Oh, boy, wasn't she absolutely sensational and all I asked Jack. her? Jack. None of them believed she'd work, especially Joe. Well, you saw. Jack, you didn't spill for me tonight. Oh, I was busy. Busy? With what? A doll? Piety. Honey, this isn't a doll. This is Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romany. There's nothing of the kind. She's just a doll. Jack, if you don't spill for me, nobody comes to see me. I told Joe to speak. But he's not much good. He can't draw flies. I'm the star act of the carnival. You always said that. I'm the star act. Honey, you have been the star act of the show. But all that's been changed now. Oh, has it? Has it? 
Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. When used by a woman, it's the most mysterious phrase in the world. When a woman says, we'll see about that, she can have practically anything in mind. From leaving you to killing you. We'll explore this problem further when I return with Act Two in just... It is best, said the poet, to let sleeping dogs lie. And, of course, to hope that lying dogs will sleep. Far more dangerous than sleeping dogs are unhappy women. What to do about it? Well, it is best to prevent a woman from becoming unhappy in the first place. But how is that possible? Almost anything can make her unhappy. Here is one having a tantrum over a doll. Piety, you're being foolish. I know. Well, then, if you know why... How could I be any other way? I'm a foolish person. You know what I think? You're jealous. Yes. How can you be jealous, jealous of a doll? I'm jealous of anything that can take you away from me. How can a doll take me away from you? She already has. You didn't spiel for me tonight. I told Joe to spiel for you. Well, Joe is no spieler, and you know it, and I know it, and the crowd knows it. Oh, but he's good enough for piety. After all, piety's no good anymore. You mustn't talk that way. Why not? Don't you think that way? Look, I'll spiel for you tomorrow night. What are you doing to her face? Oh, I'm just making it up here. You have to make her so pretty. Well, after all, she's appearing before the public, isn't she? But a gypsy lady isn't supposed to be pretty. But she's a gypsy princess. She is queen of the Romany. I am the only princess in this show. I'm Princess Soraya. I'm queen of the Nile. Why don't you put that attitude until you're dancing? Maybe then folks would believe it. Oh, I hate you. Oh, baby, it's late. Go to bed. If I'd wanted to go to bed alone, I wouldn't have gotten yeah, married. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be along in a little while. Well, don't rush on my account. Spend the night here with your lady friend. All this time, it was running through my mind. I'm going to kill her. I didn't know it was running through, but it had to be. The killing is like a plant. Don't flower out of nowhere or nothing. First, the seed has to be planted and watered. Gradually, it sprouts, it grows. And only then does it bust out in a flower. <laughs> I looked at Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romany. I'd made her with my own hands. Yep. Yeah. I was always clever with my hands. I could do anything. I couldn't make anything. Papa wanted me to become an engineer, but he died young, and there was no money for college. So I I became a drifter. Ah, she was beautiful. Princess Leonora. Every part of her was perfect. Just perfect. 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 You, you always talk to yourself, Jack, or, or is this something new? No, I didn't know anyone was there. Oh. You uh, scare a fellow sometimes. Who, me? Uh, uh, Jack, do you know what you've been doing for the past ten minutes? What? You've been standing there saying, perfect, perfect. Well, finally, I figured I'd, I'd better interrupt. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <sighs> well, it sure was a success tonight. Huh? Boy, you were right about that gypsy doll. Princess Leonora. She's perfect. Yeah, this is, this is what I mean. Yeah, well... Maybe I don't know what I mean. It's a sense. I don't know what you mean. Uh, have you finally found her, Jack? Found who? Your perfect woman. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. Ah, sure you do. And now you've been looking for a perfect dame to lift this carny into the big time. But all of them disappoint you. And now look at look at who you had the last couple of years, huh? A wire walk, a wild animal tamer, and now piety. He taught each one of them all the tricks. But you see, they all fell short. So, now you got one that can't disappoint you. I didn't know you were crazy, Joe. No, 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 no. This one isn't human. So she don't have a heart and mind of her own to fight you back. Oh. 
Is that bad? No. No, it's good. So what's the beef? There ain't no beef, except... What are you going to do about piety? Piety? Yeah, Jack. Piety. You remember? Well, she ain't like the others. Now, they were circus girls. You know, showgirls. They knew the score. With them, it was an act. Make or break. But piety... You know, you had to marry her. All right, Joe. Well, what I'm saying is, Jack, you just can't get rid of her. What are you talking about? Whoever said I wanted to get rid of her? Well, maybe you don't realize it now, Jack. But you're getting there. I felt very bad, very guilty. Poor piety. I'd been mean. Well, not mean. It wasn't intentional, any of it. But I guess you just got to keep telling a woman you love her, spend a lot of time with her, otherwise she gets all out of sorts. The next day I tried to go out of my way with piety, and things were a lot sunnier. But of course, there was the next night, and I was in the soup all over again. Where were you? Where was I? Where was I? I was right here in a shop wagon. Where were you when my act was supposed to begin? Oh. You promised you'd steal from me. I know, but I had this emergency. You weren't there. When there's a wind, I have to use a special glue to get her hair to stick. Nobody paid to see my dad. We're doing great with Princess Leonora. You don't have to dance if you don't want to. I am the star of this show. Look, you said so yourself. It was immoral to stand up there half naked and shimmy and shake your body at them leery-eyed degenerates. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's my profession. Well, there comes a time when you're able to retire. Because because of that doll? That doll has a name. Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romans. I am not going to be shoved out of my job by a, a hunk of painted wax and twisted wire. Princess, you must excuse her. Piety doesn't have much experience with royalty. Oh, you make me sick. I really was too busy with my... my Leonora to pay much attention to piety. I remember reading it in school. This ancient Greek fella, Pygmalion, he made a statue of Galatea, and it came to light. Well, I wasn't about to think anything like that, but... Oh, she was beautiful, Leonora. In a way, no human woman could be beautiful. And she seemed so... So... What word am I looking for? So natural? She said, I don't know. Anyway, as I worked on her, I started talking to her. I didn't think anything of it. Princess, I think you need a new dress. Oh, no, 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 nothing I could make. I'll send to Kansas City. No, no, to Chicago. No, no, to New York. New York for the fanciest... It's very expensive in New York. Well, it doesn't matter. Do you really want to spend all that money? Yeah, but it's your money, Leonora. You're the moneymaker around here. You're the one they come to see. No, it's your genius. Jack Youngblood, leave here. Leave the carnival, the sideshow. Leave here? And go where? Do what? It's an age of such excitement. Look at what is happening all around us. Men drive horseless carriages on the ground. Men are flying horseless carriages in the sky. Men are speaking through the air. I know, I know. This is the time for the men with the magic fingers. You are one of those men, Jack Youngblood. Yes. Leave. I can't. Poor Jack. What do you mean, poor Jack? Hey, what am I doing? I'm talking to this... this and she's talking... She's talking to me. Oh, no. She talks. She talks. <laughs> Of course she talks, Jack. He showed me how it's done. You got those phony girls. Oh. What do you mean, no? She talks. Oh, but how can she talk? We were talking just before. Now, listen. Oh, listen to this. Leonora, say hello. Say hello to Joe here. Leonora, tell Joe what you said when I told you that I'd sent to New York for a dress. You said, you said it's very expensive in New York. You said that. Leonora. Well, Jack? Hmm? She 
she spoke to me less than five minutes ago. She said, this is the time for the men with the magic fingers. You said that, Leonore. You said it. Sure. I don't use words like that. Where would I get it from? Where? All, all right, Jack, if you say... Get out of here. Get out. Sure, Jack. Okay, sure. Leonora. Leonora. Yes, Jack? There. See? There, you're talking. Why didn't you talk just before? Why didn't you speak to Joe? Why should I speak to Joe? He doesn't love me. Well, we ain't doing badly or taking one thing with another. Thanks to Princess Leonora, but we should save money where we can. <laughs> Show me where. Piety, do we need four musicians for her act? What well, she needs is two, a drummer and a flute player. Uh, you want to tell her we're cutting her little orchestra in half? What's well, huh? your job? Uh, she's your wife. All right, I'll tell her. Why don't you tell her now? Now? Yeah, yeah, here she comes. She's looking for you. She's always looking for me. Yeah, well, I'll leave you two lovebirds alone. Jack, I have to talk to hey, you. Hey, excuse me. Jack. All right, all right, Piety, what is it? Is that how you speak to me now? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm busy. Maybe you're busy, but you're not sorry. What do you want? What do I want? <laughs> I want you to treat me like a husband should. Oh, really? Well, I know husbands who get drunk and beat their wives. At least they pay attention to them. Look, Piety, I am very tired. Then why don't you come to bed at night? I have to make sure of the platform for the High Wire Act. Well, at least you're not going off to do something for her. Oh, Piety. All right, I'll tell you what I want. I need some new costumes. Costumes? Yes. I want to send to New York for some but new dresses. But we can't to... afford to. Well, you sent to New York for costumes for her. For her? You can spend a fortune on a dress for a wax dummy. You can't afford five cents for a flesh and blood woman who also happens to be your wife. All right, that's enough. Jack, please don't get mad at me. Who have I got in the whole world but you? Don't start that. Act like a grown-up sensible woman. Yes, Jack. Now, we have to make some money around here. I know. I understand. You don't need four musicians. All right. You're right. What? What do you mean, I don't need... The music should be small, special. Now, just a minute. The object is to inflame the imagination. I can't have a new costume. Now, I can't even have music. And next, I won't even have an act. Is that what you're trying to do? Is it? Why do you think people come here to look at your wax dummy? I don't want to argue about they come it. Come here to look at flesh. Sensual, alluring, female flesh. That's what you said to me. Those were the words you used. Well, Eddie, when you get this way, there's no point in talking. You're right. Indeed, Jack Youngblood, there is no point in talking at all. Something should have warned me. Something in her face, her voice, something. But nothing did. Everything about her should have warned me. But I didn't notice. And so I went off to work with my high wire artist, and she, well, where she went, I didn't find out until it was too late. Step closer, here she is, as advertised, the one, the only, the magnificent Princess Leonora, Queen of all the gypsies. She looks into your heart, she looks into your mind, your soul. For 50 cents, ladies and gentlemen, she will forecast your future. Who will be the first? Mister! Uh, the ladies on the left, Mr. Abercrombie, accept her gift for the Princess Leonora. We thank you kindly, ma'am. And how may the princess enlighten you? I've been a widow 20 years and now a fella has proposed. And I want to know... I want to know You if... want to know if it's you he's after all your money. That's what I want to know. And you shall know. Speak. Speak to this dear, kind, troubled lady, Princess Leonora. Speak. Speak. My foot had eased over to the right button under the table. The button that would release the record that held the answer. And I pushed down on the button, and I kept pushing, but nothing happened. The princess remained silent. And then I sneaked a glance at the bottom of the table. I saw the broken wires someone had deliberately, and I looked out at the crowd, and I saw her in the back, piety, and there was a grin on her face. My eyes sought out her eyes, and they met. And she wiped that grin off in a hurry, but not quite fast enough. I knew, and she knew I knew. But none of that was helping me now because I had trouble. I had real trouble. My act was falling apart and the crowd sensed it. At first it was funny. What's the matter, Princess? The cat got your tongue. Oh, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on. 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 Come on
crowd was beginning to feel the acrid of the swindle, that they were being taken. They began to get ugly, and it got contagious. And that's when, that's when anything can happen. Anything can happen. And it certainly does not look happy or promising for the Jack Youngblood Carnival this evening. Given the situation and the temper of the crowd, Jack should be in for a rough and rocky session. However, there is such a thing as rising to an occasion. If Jack knows how to do it, this is surely the time and the place. And the third act will be here before you know it. It is a magic moment. and ready days for carnivals and sideshows when the century was still new and fresh. People still had a sense of wonder. They would believe anything. Well, uh, almost anything. If you told it convincingly enough. But the one thing you couldn't do was let them down. Be unable to deliver the merchandise as promised. Retribution was sure to be swift and devastating. What I had to do in the twinkling of an eye was to figure out something that would convince everyone that I shouldn't be tarred and feathered, or even lynched. And the trouble was, nothing occurred to me. Nothing. I tried to open my mouth to say something, but nothing came out. And I was in even more trouble, because the crowd was beginning to sense it. I could feel the explosion coming, when suddenly, suddenly, there was a voice. It was her voice. My dear troubled friend, I know the agony of your soul, and yet the answer is in your own heart. I can say yes or no. I can say it is you he loves, or your money he desires. But you know that already. You know what you see in his eyes, what you hear in his voice. And so, my dear, be unafraid. Do what your heart commands. Have I helped you? Have I? Oh, yes, princess, yes. Oh, oh yes. My yes. good friends, kind people you have seen, you have heard. And now, ask, seek, hear the word for yourself, your very own self. Princess, princess. princess. seen the like of it, Jack. Never. I've been in this griff, man, and boy, 50 years. I, I never, I never seen anything to tie it. <laughs> you did it, Jack. Oh, no. She did it. Yeah, sure, sure. That's for the rooms. Between I us. I tell you, Joe, she did it. Leonora. You fixed the machinery. Now, how you were able to fix the machinery up there, out there, in plain view. Jack, how did you do it? I didn't do it. Look, can't you see the wires? They're still disconnected. Ah, maybe she don't need wires. Maybe it's this newfangled wireless thing. You know, they, they got it on ships. that They send messages through the air. Listen, now you listen to me. Huh? You heard what she said. You know every one of the phonograph records I got hooked up. What she said isn't on a single one of them. It come out of her mouth. Ah, it come out of your mouth, Jack. You had that ace in the hole all the time. What ace in the hole? Oh, oh, oh. ventriloquism. I haven't thrown my voice in 20 years. I wouldn't even know how anymore. <laughs> but you remembered in a hurry. Oh, Jack, it was the greatest performance I ever saw. Leonora, Leonora, talk to him. Tell him, tell him it was you. Oh, come on, Jack. Okay, she only talks when she wants to. Yeah, Jack, look, look, uh, we got to talk about something else now. Piety. What about piety? She can confess everything to me, Jack. She, she cut the wires. She's very stupid. She's very much in love with you. Now, will you forgive her? Forgive her? For what? She made this into the greatest act of all time. Because of what she did, I don't need the phonograph records. Leonora can speak for herself. When when you talk this way, it's 
scares me. Why can't you believe what you saw with your own eyes, you heard with your own ears? But you do forgive Pius. Yes, I forgive her. Okay, then tell her so. She's outside. Piety, come on in. Come on in. Jack, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what got into me. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was stupid. It's all right. It could have destroyed us all. Look, I said it's all right. It's all right. Sure. What do you mean it's all right? How can it be all right? I acted crazy. It was dangerous. We could have been torn down or burned out. People could have been hurt or killed. You say it's all right? Now stop it. Stop it, Pia. It's, it's, it's enough. Too much. You just don't care anything about me. Nothing at all. I misses nobody. I do good. It doesn't mean a thing. I do bad. It rolls off your back. I just don't even exist. It's all that painted harlot. Piety. That Jezebel. That's who you're in love with. Would you get out of Jack, here? Jack, but don't send me away. Don't send no, me away, I'm not Jack. sending you away. I just want to have some peace and quiet. Every night it got better. More people started coming because the word was out. And now we were making money. For the first time in my life, I knew what it was to have a roll of bills in my pocket. And it was a new show. It was no longer a seedy little down-at-the-heels carny. It was fresh and bright, and we were getting new acts, big acts. But the heart of it all was... Princess Leonora, let her probe the secrets of your innermost heart. Know your future, learn your face, ask her, ask the Princess Leonora. My dear friend, learn to trust, and you will be trusted. <laughs> my friend. Dare to live. Dare to love. There is no victory without risk. And only I knew how it was done. Only I knew that it was not a trick with phonograph records. Only I knew it was the princess herself who spoke. Because no one would believe me. How could they? Why should they? Her advice was given to all who came. And later at night, in the shop wagon, there were moments when she would speak to me. Jack, you must leave here. Yeah, I think it's time the show moved on. Not the show, you. Leave the show. Go fulfill your destiny. My destiny? Become somebody. But I'm not doing bad. I got money in the bank. Me? Can you tie that me with money in the bank? Jack. Why are you satisfied with so little? Oh, oh, that's a lot. You know the names on people's lips. Bell, Marconi, Edison, Ford, the Wright brothers. They have changed the world. Yeah, that's an idea. Instead of having our wagons pulled by horses, I'm thinking... You don't belong here. You belong with them. You're one of them. One of the men with the magic fingers. Why do you throw your life away on a... a two-bit carnival? Because, well... Is this really what you want? Is this the life for the rest of your days? Oh, Jack, you've got so much ability. Well, will you come with me? I... I'll always be with you. It's crazy. I know it's crazy, but I love you. It isn't crazy. That's why you made me. I'm perfect. I love you, Leonora. Then leave. We must leave. But how can I? If we stay here, I see death. Death? Whose death? Yours, mine, hers. You know that, don't you? You know that. Yes. Then we must leave. I'll, I'll think about it. You've thought about it all your life. Break away. Become free. That's why you made me, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Let's leave. Tonight. Tonight? Why not? Why wait any longer? But I... I... Look into my eyes, Jack, and see the truth. I'm the Princess Leonora... Queen of the Romanies. Look. I looked. 
And I saw she was no longer a wax statue. She was a woman. It had happened. Like the ancient Pygmalion, I had created a statue that had come to life. She would do what was beyond the power of every other woman I had ever known. She would give me the courage to go into the world and fight for recognition among my peers, among the men with the magic fingers. I was one of them. Yes, I was the greatest of them all. I was going into the world to take my place, not at the table of the great, but at the head of that table. Where are you going? Piety. Uh, Think you could sneak away, you and your rag doll? I'm leaving the carnival. You're leaving me? Yes, Piety, I'm leaving you. But you can't leave me. I'm your wife. To have and to hold till death to us part. I don't, I don't, I don't love you anymore. Oh, I don't say that. You never say that. All those things you told me. People change. But the marriage vow is sacred. That's how I was raised. Were you also raised to dance half naked before I... Oh, I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean to slap you. It's, you drive me crazy. Why do I have to go? You're leaving me alone in the world with nothing. I, I, I'll starve. I'm not to... leaving you alone. I'm leaving you the circus. It's yours. Joe Fraser will run it for you. He's a good man. Now, for Pete's sake, accept it gracefully. You're possessed. That's what it is. Possessed by evil. It's changed you from a kind, happy, loving husband into a devil. And she did it. That gypsy doll. Look at her. Painted, smirking harlot. Shut your Adulteress. You be quiet. She must be punished. What was the punishment for adultery in the Bible? Oh, piety, please. The adulteress. peacefully. The adulteress is stoned to death. Stoned. Piety, put down that hammer. Adulteress. Jezebel. Piety, stop that. Look at her. Piety, you're killing her. Come on, got it. You're crazy. Look, she's dead. How can she be dead? She was never alive. You're jealous. You're jealous. You're jealous. And now I'm going to kill you. That's how she died, Sheriff. That's why Piety died. She killed my Leonora. My princess, Leonora. My princess. Uh, Mr. Youngblood, now you must listen to what I am saying. Why did you kill your wife? Why? Tell me. Sheriff, if I told you, would you ever believe it? Would you? <laughs> No, he wouldn't believe it. As a matter of fact, Jack's lawyer was finally able to convince him to tell the story to a jury. They didn't believe it either. Well, did you? Anyhow, you'd better believe I shall return in just a few minutes. It was an era of magic. Overnight, we left the horse and buggy and stepped into the motor car, the airplane. Our world was transformed, and it was done for us by men with magic in their fingers. At that time, in that place, it seemed there was absolutely no limit to human ingenuity. Why, one fellow even made a doll that became a human being. Or did he? Our cast included Mason Adams, Marion Seldes, Catherine Byers, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.